All right, folks, I'm back. Um, so there is a particular character I want to work on today um, for SPR, Super Psychic Royale. And it's this guy here. And I've already like kind of drawn this uh, drawing here, but I still want it to look better than what I have here. And I think I just kind of have to start over because I still think I can come up with a better pose. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play with ideas right now uh, and draw him. Vega, he's already been featured in my webtoon, and um, he has the power to create portals with his mind, and it's one thing I want to include more is like, I want to include their ability and their look, because like when it comes to like X-Men characters, you can clearly see uh, that their suits and stuff are, are uh, created to um, augment their abilities. So Pius, he's a businessman though, and he doesn't use his abilities for fighting per se. So he doesn't really need a fighting suit, but if I were a businessman and I can create portals, what would I be wearing, you know? Um, and he does like... So what I want to do is like, maybe it's like a day after work, and he is getting ready to fight, uh, just just for some martial arts training and sparring, which he does kind of for fun as a hobby, um, you know, to keep himself healthy and strong. So, um, and I want to make sure his body looks good. Like, I really want this hexagonal shape to be a theme for him. And maybe I could even make his portals like hexagons. That's something I could change in a story. Why not? I just think it's a, it's a beautiful shape. Um, so, uh, I want his head to kind of have that hexagonal shape, so I'm going to, like, manipulate it here. When I first drew him, that hexagon shape was really appealing to me. So maybe with his body, like, I want to ex uh, express that, uh, hexagon shape and sort of taper it down. So I feel like it would make more sense if his legs were to do that shape. I'm kind of drawing it off to the side of the sketch here. So I might just like draw the hexagon first. So maybe I would have his elbows out. But hands to the sides is like kind of kind of lame. So maybe I've always imagined him to be like adjusting his fighting glove. And I don't want even though he I want him to have a broad um it brought some broad shoulders. I don't want him to be like too muscular. I want him to be lean and tall looking. Not a bodybuilder. He's a businessman who enjoys martial arts. He's tall, over six feet something. Six foot something. So I can probably make this bicep a little bit more slim. So, some it might end up being similar to the previous pose, but something a bit more dynamic where we're kind of looking up at him rather than looking straight at him. So maybe he's like tightening some uh, wrist wrapping before he's getting ready to spar or train. And another problem that we ran into was that um, he looked a little bit too much like Dudley from Street Fighter. So I want to make sure he... I mean, he Dudley is one of the inspirations, but I don't want it to be a, like a carbon copy of it. So let me... I'll, I'll just put this in another layer. We'll reduce the opacity of these old ones. And I do, I do want, I should keep the legs together if we want to keep that hexagonal theme, the hexagon theme. I do want him to have this kind of a heroic body, so I'm kind of drawing these Superman tights, or uh, Superman underwear for his frame. But I don't want to lose his head.
I tend to make legs too large, too long. So let's try to keep get these proportions looking good. Should he be balanced? I think he should be. He represents like order. I know his power is very chaotic, but the way he uses his powers is like... And he will use them in fighting for fun sometimes, but one of the reasons he focuses on using his powers for business is because when he was young, he got into some trouble using his powers in a fight. And... Uh, Basically, the, he had this whole thing with his dad. I don't want to spoil too much of the story. But basically, he decided to use his powers for good, and he thought I could use it for business. So helping people transport things through portals. So this type of like elegant, tall, classy man with his legs together like this is kind of more what I'm going for for him. And he will adopt a wide stance if he's fighting. But I think this, like, it's very orderly, you know? Almost like a ballet dancer. But I still want a rugged vibe to him, like, you know, his sleeves rolled up. I want some, maybe some chest hair showing. Maybe some old tattoos showing on his arms, which he covers up during work. Like he was once a rugged street guy, and now he's like a self-made businessman type of thing. So I got the hexagon shape going on. This is much stronger than the... Um, I don't want to lose his head. His head is looking a little bit small. Body. I still want his features to be readable. I'm not sure how long this video is going to end up being, but I just want you guys to sort of share in my character process. Now, I made this character in 2016, but because I want to create an art book with all my, um, a bunch of the main characters, I'm going to be working on them some more. And I want to share that process with you guys. I think this is quite nice. He's nice and tall. And if we're going to make an art book, like, should he be in the middle? I think it would be good if he was simply in the middle. So now I think we're going to get in there and zoom in. Uh, let's, again, make the, make the old drawings less opaque. Now, as far as his character design goes, he looks too much like Dudley. And whenever I make um, add elements to a character design um, or change elements to a character design, I want to make sure they're logical um, within their story. Not just because I want to like add something fun or cool, because then my my, precon my preconceived notions of fun or cool kind of get in the way of the character uh, evolving in their fullness. So he's a businessman, and work clothes uh, in an office. Maybe he's not so much in the office as he is in the warehouse. So maybe he would wear jeans rather than slacks. Um, I have another character with jeans though, because I'm trying to think in the context of my other characters too. Maybe slacks are fine. I had him in khaki slacks before. Which honestly might be still fine. But that was also shared with... I think Dudley had green slacks. Dudley also had suspenders. Now one thing I wanted to feature is he's gonna... I always wanted to have him, him to have a collar with like a, a square here. A square tie. And the tie comes down and it's a square at the bottom. But if we want to go with a hexagon theme, maybe we can make it a hexagon... No, but no, I always like the square aspect of it. Maybe we can make it wider. Kind of give him more of a superhero look.
We can increase his elegance. Sort of a double layered, flowy, something like that. Because the original tie was just a square tie, like that. And I always, I want this square to be here, right on his thing, because I wanted to, him to kind of look like a priest. That's why I named him Pius. But since he's getting ready for sparring, let's undo all this. I want him. I want his tie to be kind of loosened when he's like in playable in game. So, like maybe this top button unbuttoned. Top button unbuttoned. Tie slightly loose. And I made the tie red before, but we might as well just go white. Might as well just make it white. Maybe, okay, so a matador would be cool. So let's look up some references of a matador. Let's see here. That would be cool. Ah, yeah, something like this. Okay. Now this is a dangerous and arguably immoral sport and a lot of these guys like actually die and get like impaled by the bulls and stuff and a lot of them uh one thing i didn't know is that they actually kill the bulls when i saw um bullfighting like in bugs bunny cartoons and stuff they were just like messing around with the bull but i didn't know they actually like attack the bulls and like try to kill the bull in the fight but you know uh, i don't question like classic uh what do you call it um uh, traditions, you know, if this is a, a classic tradition in, I think it's Spain, Spain or Mexico, it's Spain, it's in Spain, you know, they get gored and stuff, it's bloody, it's a bloody sport, kind of a crazy sport, but I think these shoulder pads are quite inspiring, they wear like epic shoulder pads, oh, that's bloody, I don't know if I'd be showing that on YouTube, um, but here, right here, these shoulder pads. Um, let's let's try to bring that into his costume. And they have these like short vests here, and it looks like they all kind of use the same uh, similar. Whoa, there are female bullfighters. That's crazy. Yeah, they all kind of use this short vest, which is kind of not kind of cool. So we can like add in some shoulder pads in his uh, costume. How would that look? I I think it kind of takes away from the ruggedness of his original silhouette though, with the shoulders. But then maybe we go. We want. We don't want to go rugged we want it to be less rugged let's look at sparring gear so typically sparring gear does not include uh chess pieces and here this one does and it does it have shoulder pads it kind of does so maybe he should have full sparring gear And I think the sparring gear would make him look less like Dudley. Like he's... This is after work. That looks kind of cool, to be honest. Oh, this one's animated. Full sparring gear? Yeah, something like this. With the shoulder pads. 
and like the colored chess piece. But then it would, it would you wouldn't be able to see his tie. Unless he wears his tie over the chess piece. Is that like too awkward? I don't know. We're playing with design elements here. And I think we should we should try everything out. Go back to the matadors here. This guy's wearing a tie. So they they wear they wear these ties right over it. And then the vest goes over the tie. So that's actually kind of cool. So maybe We want some flash and also like some flash combined with um what do you call it? Uh functionality. Now, in the story of Super Psychic Royale, like, the, the point of the story in which he's fighting, it would make sense for him to have this uh, flashier performance um, things. I really like this gold stuff on the sleeve. That's kind of cool. And he would have a mostly black, like, black and gold and white. Ooh, like the, like the White Ranger. Oh, we can bring in the White Ranger. Okay, okay, this is looking cool. A White Ranger Matador businessman. So I see the uh, shoulder pads here. The Saiyan armor. That's pretty awesome. So we can have the armor going around his neck here. Collar. He can have a fancier collar. We can bring the this ascot in, long ascot. Let's see. We always gotta use references. Long ascot. Okay, so we could have the collar up like that. And then the ascot, like a long ascot, like this, like kind of like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, elegance. We want we want to give this man some elegance. So we will we can do the collar up, the Saiyan armor. Whoa, his his design is completely changing, but it it definitely uh, it makes him it makes sense. We're we're using logic to derive these uh, design changes. And his neck would be wrapped a bit more. So this collar would actually be a bit higher. The knot maybe right here. Wraps around and then it comes down. The knot's right there. And then it would kind of sort of cascade down this way. I think I need to do more sketches of him. I'll I'll keep this because I really like that pose. But let's kind of mess around with his his collar here. So tall collar. This is his neck. Um. I think, uh, let's make this smaller. Let's get his whole form, shoulder form in there. Traps, we want him to have really nice traps. Chest, traps, chest, shoulders areas. We want him to look really good here. And like, I'm still not great with like the deltoid connection of the muscle. Maybe if you're on YouTube, you can help me with that. So there's his muscles there. And his neck actually should be bigger now. Let's 
like lift up his head here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to mess around with his collar here. Tall collar. He has to move his head around, so I don't want it to be too close to his chin. Long ascot wrapping around and then coming down, not in the middle, right here. Cascading down. Now he looks much more like a Pius de la Vega than a Dudley. And then, after the ascot, we'll bring in the armor. The matador slash sparring armor with the shoulder pads. Now these shoulder pads for the sparring gear don't go out very far. But it looks like it's protecting your traps. It protects your traps and your collarbone, it looks like. So maybe... Maybe these don't go out quite as far. Yeah, bring them in a little bit. So it looks, yeah, it looks a little bit less flashy that way. So that the silhouette of his shoulders, which is what I wanted, you can still kind of see on the outside here. Um, and we want his chest to taper in. Now, for the matador look, they will often be carrying the cape to the side. There, she has the cape on the side. Yo, what if he, if he, a cape? Would he look so much more sick if he had a cape? Wait. What if he what if my man had a cape? That would make his movements around with the portals so much cooler. I never really thought of Pice having a cape before. But I mean, bullfighting was all, is all about the bait and punish, right? I don't want to play too hard into the matador thing, though, because I don't. I'm not really a fan of the sport. The whole concept is just kind of brutal to me. But the aesthetic is like really cool. Oh, it looks like Marvel has a matador character. But the colors match. The red, gold, black, white. The colors match the original concept I had. Hmm. Now, another one is a priest. So, do priest... Wear capes. They kind of do. They have these cloaks. And you can kind of see the elements of the collar here, too. Kind of like this. It just goes to the elbow. This one goes all the way down. I'm combining a lot of concepts here. And that's what, for me, that's what creativity is all about. Just combining the concepts. And this one is a cloak that goes all the way around. So that would put his silhouette, it would make his silhouette kind of have this vibe right here, which is also kind of cool.
And then the cape would be like maybe that short. And then underneath is sparring gear. Now he looks way now he looks like a fighting game character. Um, I know Nick is going to watch this, and I wonder what he thinks of these ideas, but this is, like, kind of cool. It's very different, but I'm trying to, you know, I have an idea of his, who he is as a character. It's not really disobeying the logic of his character. It's from a rugged street guy into this cool... Uh, heroic looking fighter. Like now that he has money. Maybe the streets never really left him. But now that he has money, he, he can go with a little bit more poise and flash. Okay, let's look at the matadors again. What are they wearing around their waists? Because priests, it looks like they'll just wear a sash right here and have this little thing coming down on the side. Maybe some prayer beads. The white ranger, the sparring armor, and the matador. Looks like this matador is also wearing a square tie. So a sash. Originally, I just had him in khakis and a belt. Well, we can give him a sash. Maybe just some, some like prayer beads here, like a long prayer bead. Prayer beads belt. Here we go, rosary belt. Yeah, like that. You'll see these on um, religious folk. That's beautiful. That's quite beautiful. Here we have the same aesthetic going on with the cloak, the cape, the belt. Sandals would be pushing it for him. I think he would just have nice, uh, maybe black shoes. But this is a big change. This is why design is important, because I've, I've already gone and drawn his uh, fighting stance, but then the fighting stance is what made him look too much like Dudley. And now, now that he has this costume, it would completely change the vibe. He can go with a more of a matador stance. And honestly, having the cape, just it's going to make animating him way more fun. Because we have to imagine, like, he's a businessman, but he's a boss fighter after work when he goes to spar. Maybe he'll put this on. And I always think about no capes from The Incredibles. Like, would it create a weakness for him? Not really, because he can just teleport. <laughs> Who's going to grab your cape? And he can use it to sort of cloak his attacks. Make him ambiguous. So I think maybe this can come around his arms too. Well, we'll have the cloak in the front, but then the cape, cape in the back is fine, actually. And then bring in his hair. I like his, the hair that I have for him. And some maybe like prayer beads here. This man is ready with power of God and anime on his side. Power of God for sure. I don't know about anime. It's beautiful though. This silhouette is like way better than before. 
The silhouette is nice, so we can tell who he is. Um, now the pants, the matadors wear these like tight um, uh, pants. And originally I had him to work slacks. Now something I also do wrong often is like the position of the knees. Like leg anatomy, like the proportions of the leg bones and like where the kneecap goes, it's something I need to work on. So maybe I can do a video on that one soon too. I know the last video I put inspired by Rena Tuna. And I'm still inspired by Rena Tuna here, but I'm just, you know, he does um I still forgot what the the names of the, his types of characters where you take an object, make a character out of it. Me, I'm just drawing from um, different references. I still like the straight cut pants. Make his feet a little bit bigger here. Now, he, he, I think this helps. Like, now he looks way more of a Pius de la Vega. Like, he doesn't wear this at work. I think his, his business casual outfit is what he wears at work. Like... The, the work slacks, the tie, the shirt, and then after work he just puts this over it. Like it, it's it's a continuation of his work. I mean, I guess it would make his work work clothes get dirty and sweaty, but maybe he's really good about washing them. Maybe he even has like a portal system for washing clothes. Who knows? Maybe he has a business partner. Like he just throws his clothes in a portal. And then it goes to like this washing place that they made together. Yeah, dude. And it just runs through the cycle. He would have systems for everything. Now we will remove this, um, we, we'll, we'll make a new file here. This is something I do often. Where I make a new file, because uh, this is originally originally in my uh, document called Sketchbook. And I want to put it in a new file. I have a particular size here, US letter. I think it's just the 8.5 by 11, which is what I plan, the size that I plan to print all of these on. Um, so Pius will cut the layer and copy it into here. We will save this in our cloud folder as pious.kra. Yeah, he's looking pretty awesome. Now let's uh, move this piece. Center him a bit again. Oops. Yeah. Now, is he too slender? Like, he's tall here, but should we widen his frame a bit? Maybe a tiny bit. There. Should we have the cape come straight down or taper outward a little bit? Wow, oh, he looks so much more epic now. I want to be able to see his straight pan cut in the silhouette, so I'm going to have these come down like that. Not necessarily flares. Though I think the flare is coming back. I think if it flares a tiny bit, it would match it would match like his costume. Now, we'll, are we going to create any more flash here? Anything on his legs? Or are we going to keep his legs simple? Maybe dark? I like these from uh, the, the White Ranger. These little uh, cuffs around the boot. Here, it's just uh, short pants, long socks. So should we add anything down here? Like that. No, I think we'll just keep it simple. And then we, we can make the pants darker. Uh, 
And now we can widen the ascot. And really, we want this square to be visible. So very large here. The tie of his ascot is going to be very square and very visible. And we want that to be white. And as a, as a pious man, you know, one of the Christian philosophies is die to self. And maybe that's why he's wearing black and um, red. But the gold is going to create a little bit of flashiness. Black, white, red, and gold, for sure. Now, anything here around the pelvis region, we could lift up the pant line a bit higher right up here. Lift it up to his waist some more. And his belt over here connected to the prayer beads. This is Pais de la Vega. I think this is like what I wanted. Like before I was kind of pushing toward ruggedness. But it's rugged in a way that's like... Yes, I can fight. But I'm, I'm tall. I'm formal. I've changed my ways. But I don't, I don't want him to have an air of some, like a sense of arrogance or pride. Like I want him to be humble. So it's very flashy, but how can we make this flashiness also look humble? We have to look at a priest. I think we need to look at a priest or a bishop. See the bishop, they, they're kind of flashy. They have the red, black, and gold. Now this one's a bit more humble. It has the red and black. I think to me, this feels humble. But it shows his rank. Why do bishops wear sort of flashy clothes? They have the cane. Like, why? You know? I know diocesan priests, they're like, just black. But when they celebrate mass, then they put, you know, the garments on. I don't really know the meaning. But here he has the he has a cape over his hands and his arms. Now definitely it doesn't it doesn't give me a sense of humility with the hat on like that. I'm sure these are all great men, humble men. But with the hat on, it doesn't give me that vibe so put the hat off though like um whoa transgender lutheran that's interesting didn't know that was a thing or uh, that lutherans could do that um okay so this is bishop baron he's very famous let's see here he's got the staff now the Pope, I like the way he dresses, He's very humble here. It's just the white. But then when he celebrates mass, he puts on the garments, the golden garments. So maybe Pius is putting this stuff on because it is a celebration for him. It's a celebration. He's not doing it for himself, but celebrating the principles of love and service that he's dedicated himself towards. And in the performance when he's fighting in the in the super psychic royale he wants to send a message of humility love but also power and responsibility that everything he's put on is functional to serve the greater good no hat look like wouldn't it be so like yeah, it would almost look bad. It would almost look evil if he had a, a hat, big hat like that, you know? But to keep the keep the humility, I don't want a hard black. I want a brownish 
black. Like if we look at, um, what are they called? Uh, Carmelite monks. Now these guys, they're just brown. It's like a very dark brown. Now I've met some of these guys before, a couple of them, and they are some of the coolest, most humble, prayer-oriented men you can meet. And I really like that they're just in the brown. They all wear the same thing. So this here would not really be showing his arms. It would just be like this. Now at this point, are the shoulder pads too much? Do we want to keep it covered? No, I like the shoulder pads. We, we'll keep we'll we'll keep it there. No, wait, no, no, no. Hold on. We have the shoulder pads under there, like there will be a sort of an under armor, but the cape will still go over it. So he'll still have this sort of, and that helps the hexagon shape. So under here, he has an ascot over it, but he has the cloak. Hmm, or should this be under as well? No, you know what? I I think we should still keep the shoulder pads and ascot over this little cloak. We're not going full Carmelite here. We're just throwing so many different ideas together, and I think it's becoming a little bit more cohesive. A little bit more flashy than before. Um, I think we can start bringing it together. Yeah, let's start bringing it together. We're, we're going to go in and make a new layer. I'll probably end the video soon. Um, maybe I'll keep going. I don't know. I do have to head out soon, head to lunch, so we will end the video soon. But I, I think this was very productive. I have a nicer concept. Now, I do want to work on more female characters. I've actually been working on them more often, but I just haven't recorded those processes yet. Um, but you guys are getting my attempt at drawing, like, strong male characters. Uh, I want them to be attractive, of course, but, um, I'm, you know, again, I don't know what is attractive in a man. And I just go by context, as I explained in the last video, so. There was one viewer who said, yes, it's an attractive, uh, male character. So that's, that, that, uh, was nice and nice, a little affirmation for me. Okay. Okay, we'll just keep going here um, until it's time to go to lunch. So we want the hexagon shape on his head. Here, his head was kind of square. So we want his forehead to kind of taper in and up and back a little bit. Now, for if he's humble, would he be looking down at us? Like in his original pose, I have him looking down. But maybe I should have him sort of looking down, his head tilted down and looking up at us. Would that be good? Let's actually go back to the scheduler here. So let's change the position of his head. I don't want him to look submissive. See, that's a bit... It's kind of weaker. What if it was just... Um, like, level? Maybe looking slightly off to the side. There's the hexagon shape. Too much chin. Now that's pretty good. 
That's pretty good. I want him to look taller. We'll make the head a bit smaller. Oh, there. That's good. And we'll bring his hair, comb it to the side. Eyes looking straight. This is a good man, you know? Like, I think I think if he's looking down, looks too weak. If he's looking... Or if he's head tilted up looking down, lo looks too arrogant. Head tilted down looking up looks too weak. So let's um make just make his head level. That's much better. Wow, look at this character. A lot of fun. I always wanted him to have this uh, weird little mustache. Oh, but he's still quite beautiful. He's he's definitely he's very beautiful, very beautiful character. Wow, nice. Wow, nice. This is nice. Okay, so I think we have a great foundation here for the new pious. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed that uh, character design process. All right. So I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later. And I want to catch up with the 365. So I'll do multiple videos a day. And hopefully you guys like all of them. See you guys later. Bye-bye.